Now, a KXAN News investigation. An Austin father says it's been almost a year since his two sons were kidnapped. For months, he says law enforcement would not help him get his children back, so he came to KXAN for help. And our lead investigator, Chris Willis, has been working this story for nearly seven months, and he joins us with all the details. It's been a long one. Leslie and Robert, good evening to you. Divorce, child support, and custody battles happen every day. But to us, this one was different. Stephen James fought for his country with three tours of duty in the U.S. military. But when his children were kidnapped over a year ago, he couldn't get anybody to fight for him. I haven't even been in their bedroom, you know, since they left. I can't, I can't hang up, you know, pictures of them everywhere. I can't, I can't think about it. As a dad, Stephen James says the birth of his two sons felt like heaven. Since June 20th of last year, he's been in a living hell. To take my mind off what, what's going on and get, you know, get, get five minutes of peace. It's been 335 days since Stephen has seen his boys, 12-year-old Mateo and 9-year-old Zane, kidnapped by their mother, Alicia James Gomez, last summer. Stephen says he remembers the phone call like it was yesterday. Yeah, she's taken the kids and gone to Mexico with her mom, and I'm never going to see him again. Stephen's nightmare began three years ago. Stephen and Alicia were separated pending a divorce. She had moved to the Dallas area and he was in Austin. During the separation, a court issued a restraining order against Alicia and ordered the boys to live with him and stay in school in Austin, but allowed her visitation. In May, Alicia's divorce attorney withdrew from the case because Alicia cut off communication. In February, a judge orders a psychological evaluation and months later, Stephen files a report with Child Protective Services when his kids return with bruises after a visit with their mom. But following court orders, supervised visitation continued. And during a summer visit, he dropped the kids off in Hillsboro with their mom and hasn't seen them since. She threatened a couple of times during the two years we were separated to take those kids and, and run with them. Nobody knows where she is or where the children are. And since she's on the run and refuses to show up to court, Stephen cannot get a final court order or a divorce. I expect a hell of a lot more from my state and my country than to, than to let somebody take two children out of this country on the run and nobody, nobody do a thing like it's okay, like it's just two more kids missing. So late last year, Stephen came to KXAN, and we started looking. We followed leads in North Texas, Kansas, Colorado. We hired a private investigator in Oregon to track Alicia's relatives. And despite her claim of taking the boys to Mexico, we got a tip that Alicia was back in the Dallas area, where she has a large family helping her stay under the radar. We found no sign of the kids at her last address, where Alicia's brothers still live. So we went to the family church and camped out at her father's restaurant and then to his home where we asked him where his daughter and grandsons are hiding. I was told that they were in Mexico somewhere, but I don't know where they are. Haven't heard from them? No. Um, well, just by, um, uh, she has put some messages on Facebook, but I don't know where she is. Those messages on Facebook appear to be taunting Stephen with posts like, you tried to take them away from me, how does it feel now that it's flipped? And the taunting continues on YouTube with this bizarre video of the boys at an unknown location talking about, of all things, custody issues. Listen. When we left, so custody was not, was not finalized yet. It was still in the stages of being finalized. He still had temporary temporary shared custody. That's all I'm going to say about that, but basically, he, the sole custody was a lie. And then in March, things changed. The court agreed to hear Stephen's divorce. Alicia did not show up, and the judge let her have it, awarding Stephen the sole custodian of the kids and ordering Alicia to turn them over immediately. The judge also ordered Alicia to pay child support, and if Stephen gets his kids back, Alicia must post a $50,000 bond just to see them again. A bittersweet day for Stephen. This is the final piece in what law enforcement's needed to go after my children. Civil court and criminal court are vastly different, and jurisdiction seemed to be a major problem for law enforcement. Stephen could not get any help. Tonight I'm gonna, I'm gonna close my eyes, but I'm gonna wake up six, seven times after every single dream, and I just want my boys to come home. So we went to the DA's office in Williamson County with the final divorce decree ordering the kids returned. 
And for the first time, with a newly elected district attorney, somebody listened and immediately took action. We'll get the kids. It's just a matter of... Uh, you don't when. pause when you say that. No. You have no. No speculation. Uh, Alicia Gomez better understand one thing. She's going to jail if those kids are not returned. Her family will face charges if those kids aren't returned. Roger Harris is a sergeant investigator with the DA's office in Williamson County, and he's also a dad. Within days, Harris had felony aggravated kidnapping charges against Alicia and tracked her to a town outside of Veracruz, Mexico, where a source says she is living in deplorable conditions with no electricity. The kids kept behind locked doors and not enrolled in school. Sure, we're running into some roadblocks because it's an international case. We're dealing with a th uh, third world country and things are difficult. Finding her is a big step, but getting her to return is a leap because Mexican authorities refused to extradite Alicia to the U.S. But then our source in Veracruz sent us this, the first confirmed sighting of Stephen's youngest son, Zane, behind a locked door in Orizaba, Mexico, and the first time a dad has seen his son in nearly a year. Without even seeing his face yet, I knew that was my son. You know, no, no doubt. Mind. No doubt in my mind. Even though we found the children, Alicia refused to return them. A decision that didn't go over too well with the DA's office. We'll be at your office at uh, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, you can follow me up, um, and we're gold. Uh, Ken, keep your fingers crossed. So they decided to pay Alicia's family in Dallas a visit. They say family knew where Alicia was hiding all along. Prosecutors say her aunt, Edna Annette Bankston, was helping her stay on the run by wiring her money from just outside of Plano. With the help of Deputy U.S. Marshals, Roger Harris went to Annette's home. Sweet, that'll work. And then to her employer. Right over here to this car here. And arrested her at work <laughs> and booked her into jail in Denton County. That leverage appears to be working. After sitting in jail, Aunt Annette has contacted Alicia in Mexico, urging her to return the boys. From Mexico, Alicia has even contacted investigator Roger Harris, who is now working a deal to reunite Zane and Mateo with their father. Hopefully things will turn out for the better. The boys will be returned to, to the United States, and it'll have a happy ending. All right, we checked late this afternoon, and uh, it is still going on to try, efforts are, to get the boys returned to the United States. The DA's office tells me if they're not returned, they will continue to pursue conspiracy charges against other family members who helped Alicia kidnap those boys. We will stay with this story and let you know every development along the way. In the meantime, we're in the studio and we're live. Chris Willis, KXAN News. If you have a tip for our Investigates team, email us at investigates at kxan.com or you can also call our tip line. That number there, 512-703-5255.